This is a 1962 Panasonic black and white. And this is probably one of the very first Panasonic uh, Japanese built televisions sold as an import in the United States. I'm going to go out a little bit here and say this set is very, very rare. This is much more rare than something like an RCA um, CT100. It might not be as desirable, but it is rare. These, this was a time when Japanese products were considered largely inferior and problematic and they weren't today Japanese stuff is widely thought of as good stuff and people seek it over Chinese stuff well this was diff a different time I found this set underground in a miners root cellar cold storage uh, with a couple other sets, a Philco 4 that was filled with dirt and another one that was so trashed I didn't grab. But uh, I received a request to analyze and get this set working. And in a previous video we kind of analyzed this TV and it had no high voltage. And the picture tube tested good. And unfortunately it's not in mint condition. You can see some of these bodge hack job on the volume control there and the fine tuning knob is broken but there's enough of it there to be able to fine tune it. It's filled with mud and sand and uh, rodent feces. But other than that, it's got a plastic front cover. This is a very, very rare television. It's all metal construction. And what we want to do is we want to try and get it working. Uh, not, I don't want to do a full like shotgun recap restore on it because that could be an immense waste of time for nothing if something like the flyback is bad. Let me start off by saying this is one of the most complicated black and white sets I've ever looked at. We'll take a look at the schematic here in a second. 1962 was a time when Japanese import stuff was largely looked at and considered to be inferior to American uh, not kind of glorified and held up the way it is today. So these sets, probably not many of them sold and probably hardly any of them survived. It wouldn't surprise me if this was maybe one of one or one of two or three remaining total. Here's a screenshot of an advertisement for the television in 1962, a Life magazine that Autobahn found for me. Take a look at this. This is the most complex black and white set I've ever checked out. As far as I like to do my research before I get into these things, Let's just look at the filaments here. So they have two separate sets of filaments and they actually have a variable resistor here to I guess dial in the filament voltage. You can see basically we have one series string here and we have one series string here and look at all of these inductors and filtering. Look at this filtering network here. Check out the complexity of the just the after the flyback. All these different. Uh, this is how often do you see a black and white with a horizontal linearity efficiency coil? 
there are more capacitors in this than pretty much any black and white I've ever looked at and the oil paper capacitors in these are junk they have to go they're almost always shorted and they're highly problematic you can get away with American stuff a lot of the time you don't have to change them to get it to work but this thing we're probably going to have to replace a lot of these it uses a vertical blocking transformer highly complex Just to give you an idea of how many fixed capacitors all of these and fixed capacitors continued all of these that's not even counting the electrolytics look at how many electrolytics this is this is, this is just a little crappy tabletop black and white a zenith would have maybe four or five electrolytics maximum you can see here this is the back of the chassis and you can see all of these crappy oil capacitors here now using that parts list I did go to my local guy and pick up the capacitors yesterday at least all of the ones that I would suspect would short this is why I want to diagnose this thing and at least get it to work and prove that the yoke isn't shorted or the flyback isn't shorted or some unobtainable part isn't bad before I replace all of these capacitors this this could be a day-long project and then I still run the risk of making a mistake and screwing something up so we're not gonna shotgun recap this we're gonna actually diagnose and fix whatever the problem is in the previous video it didn't have any high voltage so what we're gonna do if that's still the case we're gonna start out with an analysis real quick because this was two or three years ago that I I check this out The first thing we're going to do if it's a horizontal we're going to go through and we're going to diagnose the circuit and find out why there's no high voltage instead of just replacing all of these capacitors and with something this old and baked and crusty you run the risk of something breaking or, or damaging something so let's get into it. Panasonic AN14 from 1962. Probably one of the oldest Japanese sets still alive are sitting in front of me. And now we get into the comedy part of our show. Like I say, this was in the cold storage of a uh, miner's cabin and the cold storage is usually a tunnel dug into the side of the mountain um, 20 or 30 feet to kind of store your, your your goods that don't want to see 110 degrees in the summer or don't want to freeze in the winter and the ceiling had kind of came down and the flash flood waters were running in so oh crap here's another one hey Kevin come move this right there under that board wow oh, crap <laughs> huh what is this? Oh, this is a uh, Mashusta or Panasonic. Panasonic. I I gotta get this. I don't care if I have to strap it to the roof. These are rare. That's why you 
see the level of crust that you see here. But I don't care about that. I don't want to screw with that. I don't want to pressure wash it or do anything that could disturb or damage this old brittle stuff. Got a couple fuses there. Horizontal output damper. What I might do is um, I want to fire it up and see what it does and then what I might do is I might take a paintbrush and a vacuum and try and just clean the playground out of it here. But yeah, where's the flyback in this thing? I guess this must be the flyback right here. Yoke is here. Can't even see the condition of the yoke to see if maybe the windings are all green and oxidized and rotten. Let's get a cheater cord and power it up. One of the first things I would admit with these videos is I make a hell of a lot of mistakes in them and sometimes people catch them and sometimes they don't. I make mistakes in stuff I say, I make mistakes in stuff I do, and I don't even edit it out or try and cover it up because that's just the kind of stuff you, you do when you do this. Um, I'm not, this is not a profession for me, this is a fun hobby, so... I have my I have unique ways of doing stuff and they work in my mind and they seem to get good results so I'm not going to change any of that. Anyway, here's what we're going to do. And this is one of those non-universal kind of dangerous things that I do. I'm going to measure basically the horizontal output tube cathode current or plate current and I'm going to measure it on the damper because I was afraid this thing is stuck on here so tight. I was afraid I was going to, if I forced it, I was going to pull the cap out of the tube. And these are some weird tubes that I don't have. So we'll take a look here on the schematic. Yeah, 25E5 and... Um, 30AE3. Actually, 30AE3 sounds like one I might have, but 25E5. Anyway, our cathode current is supposed to be 98 to 115 milliamps. And I've basically disconnected the cap right here. So the B plus voltage comes up through here, over here, over here, up and up to the plate, and then down. So I'm going to be measuring the plate, or basically, this should be, let's just round that off to 100, minus the 20 from here, because there's going to be 20 milliamps coming up through the screen, so I should be measuring 80 milliamps, say about 80 milliamps right here, and see how this says do not measure? That's why I'm using a standalone amp meter like this. You never measure this with your uh, DVDM. So, and I really don't care if this gets blown up or something. So here we go. Where's the power? Hundred and thirty seven watts, a hundred and nine watts, ninety seven watts. Comes our cathode current. Oh, see that dip? That was a horizontal oscillator starting. But yeah, a hundred and 50 milliamps, that's excessive. That'll cremate that tube. Oh, I hear filter hum. Yeah, we don't want to do this for very long, so... And 192 watts. So, yep, we don't want to do that for very long. Alright, I want to do this one more time, and I'm looking to see that 
dip with when the horizontal oscillator starts meaning the meters coming up like this and it goes like that so it's coming up and then it dips before it continues up and that dip like that is where the horizontal oscillator is starting so here we go and theoretically the horizontal oscillator should start before the output but oftentimes that's not what happens we see that dip Yep, there was the dip. There it was. So that dip is where the horizontal oscillator starts running. But still something is shorted or out of whack to where uh, the horizontal circuit is not working. So no high voltage. So the areas we want to check are a bad flyback. Any of these capacitors here, the, the boost filter this capacitor, this capacitor, that capacitor, and who uses 0 .08 and 0 .008? How about 0 .01 and 0 .1? What's this 0 .08 thing? Here's another 0 .08. 0 .05, that's a common value. 0 .1, that's a common value. 0 .01. 0.005 at a kilovolt. So this can cause that. Any of these capacitors, the tube, that tube, uh, the yoke, if the yoke is shorted. But that's our job to get to the bottom of it. See what we've got here, we've got dead bugs, petrified bugs, we've got spider webs, we've got mud. Nice. Just for verification, let's take a look at the uh, grid, the control grid, the signal coming in and it says negative 25 volts here and here's what our uh, signal is supposed to look like. So we got negative 24.7 volts, that's real close to negative 25, and there's our signal right there. So what we got coming into the horizontal output tube looks good, so it's something on the other, either from the flyback yoke on that side. Now at this point disconnected, I'm measuring from the do not measure line to ground and I got negative one volt. Unfortunately, that's not a reliable test. Usually you can use that to test for leakage in these capacitors because on most TVs, these capacitors are not tied to ground, they're tied to B+. That way you don't have to have a thousand volt capacitor. The differential between B plus and boost is not that great. But of course in this set they've come up with their own custom design that's different from everything else. Alright, it's disassembly time. Maybe I should check the damper tube first, but just listen to this noise as I try and remove this tube. This is what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid these sockets are going to break. Look at that. Talk about Marlboro country. Jeez. That's where the flavor is. You know, so as I kind of suspected, this is uses these cheap-ass Bakelite wafer sockets that like to break. 
after they you know been baked by the tube they just they just break look at that's in a uh, horizontal output tubes an original Matsushita Panasonic tube um, anyway cleaning the sandbox out of the TV the 30 AE3 30 AE3 damper tests good and I tried to test it as best I could on two tube testers not that I trust that I'd rather substitute it but I don't think I have one it might be worth taking the time to take a look before I start tearing this thing apart I kinda like how that transformer is just caked with dirt just push it in there so check out this adjustment here. This is a, a a new one for me. This is this is slotted right here, and that's a thumb screw, and that allows you to move that up and down and move that core in and out of that that slug in and out of that coil. That's a that's a new. I've never seen anything like that before. That's a new one for me. This is an interesting TV. With much TLC, I was able to get these two tubes out of here without breaking the tubes or the sockets, and I got the mud cleaned up as best I could. Now, the question is, my spreadsheets say I do have these, but do I spend half the day trying to locate them and verify that they're not bad, or do I trust the tube tester? I tend not to trust tube testers uh, because one of these tubes could be leaky or gassy or something causing this problem and the tube tester might not catch it where when you put it in a high voltage situation it does catch it and then you know I've torn the whole TV apart trying to locate a problem that's right in front of my face. This good diagnostic pro process would be to change these tubes with known good tubes to verify without a doubt that they're not the cause of this problem no high voltage and also the uh, high voltage rectifier tube where is that where do they even have that thing hidden so I guess according to this it's back in there somewhere on the back side which that could be gassy or shorted too causing this problem. Okay, I went back and checked this on a, another a Syncor tube tester and it's showing a short on pin 3 and 8. And I'm not sure what that's in reference to. I mean, if it's checking from the cathode to pin 3 and 8, I'm not sure what that's a reference to on here. Because it looks like pin 3 is the or pin 8 is the cathode so I need to get before I go any further I need to find one of these 25 E5s and verify that that that's you know if we get a picture on it we just recap it and we know it's good but until we can get high voltage until we can get a picture until we can prove that these unobtainable parts are not bad then there's no point in going forward so 25e5 I'm gonna have to find one okay I dug out a brand new old stock 25e5 Sylvania I tested it it did not show short so tested in USA made in Japan uh, here we go See that, that right there, that's the stigma that was attached to Japan at that time. Obviously 25E5 is a Japanese tube. Oh, I got the meter hooked up backwards, standby. Alright, let's try that again. That was odd. Oscillator start. I 
Nope. 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 Don't want to burn the new tube. Well, let me see. Uh, hold on. Wow, look at this. Oscillator start. Ooh, I hear horizontal now. All right, still nothing on the screen. So, I, you know, the other thing I do not hear is vertical. I don't hear the... But that could be because there's no high voltage. Sometimes the vertical runs off the boost. Yeah, see the vertical height here is powered off the boost. So the vertical probably would not run unless we had the horizontal voltage. Interesting build build design and build quality. Nice speaker. Lots of dirt. Jeez, you know the way this thing is built. I'll be the first one to admit I should probably try and find a, col a, a capable collector of early Japanese television and electronics and pass this off to them for the TLC and full restoration it needs because um, I'll be able to probably get it working and verify diagnose what's wrong with it but I don't really have the passion for this to fully restore it and bring it in the house kind of thing so the rectifier tube is in there. I'm still trying to figure out. I guess you take that out and then it comes. That gives access. I don't know. One other problem is because this thing was so wet, some of these screws, or I'm having to use vice grips to get these screws out, and some of them have broken off. So there's the flyback. And. Uh, the high voltage rectifier tube. Crustastic, man. Jeez, it's cracked. All right, so continuing on with the diagnosis here, I unplug the tube, which if it's gassy or leaky or whatever, at least that gets it out of the circuit. Ooh. Ooh. I think we might have a diagnosis here, a leaky rectifier tube loading down the horizontal circuit. Let's see, let's put that back on there. See what our current consumption is now. What happens if I pull it off? Don't try this at home, boys and girls. This is dangerous. Yeah, if this was solid state, I would have already destroyed a bunch of stuff, but since it's tube, it can handle the abuse. All right, so again, before we uh, condemn that tube let's check the actual high voltage because if that tube is if that tube is leaky the CRT will just act like a short and yes there is well one kilovolt one kilovolt but we have a good arc we have a really good arc on the the cap so there's good high voltage going in there so let's get that rectifier out and actually if I'm not mistaken this tube has gone to air 
See the getter? See how the getter's gone at the top? This tube has gone to air, which would explain everything. 1X2. Okay, here's a, a brand new 1X2. You can see the getter there. You can see these side by side. There they are side by side. A lot of people watching this might be thinking, well, why didn't you just test all the tubes? Well, this channel is not a replace all the or test all the. This channel is about, and my method is step-by-step -step logical diagnosis and testing. So we don't do replace all the or test all the here. Oh, 12 kilovolts. Do we have any? Oh, we have, we have, ooh. Yeah, it's just, it's there. It's just sunny out here now. And we're at 120 milliamps, which is a little on the high side. But look at how it's bouncing around. But that could just be because the frequency's off. But yeah, 12 kilovolts. And they want 12 to 14. This has some really bizarre vertical deflection, but that could be because... Uh, of those lovely Japanese capacitors. Just a quick summary, we started out with uh, no high voltage, no raster, high cathode or plate current on the horizontal output. I tested the horizontal output and damper tube. They both tested good except the horizontal output that was in the set showed some shorts. I substituted the horizontal output tube with a brand new old stock one that did not show shorts. It didn't make any difference, so I guess that means that the tube tester is mistaken or something. Um, we had to open it up to get to this rectifier tube, this high voltage rectifier, meaning had to take the, the knobs off, the front off, the back off, and the shell that wraps around the outside off to even access this tube, and this happened to be the tube that was bad. It's gassy, it went to air, and is loading the high voltage down and causing the high current draw in the horizontal output stage. I was suspecting capacitors, yoke, or flyback, but it turned out just to be a, a tube that was deeply buried in this set. Even to get to the tuner tubes, you have to tear this thing apart. Interesting design. Anyway, um, We'll come back to this this evening when the sun goes down. It's supposed to be brutally hot today, and this thing ain't going in the house. Just taking the speaker off the front grill to wash the front grill. And look at how some bugs ate, ate this thing. You know, I was thinking this TV probably belongs in a museum, but it's not a very good specimen but it might be the only specimen. I don't know that there are any more of these Panasonic AN14s out there in existence still. Check out how the Mashusta logo actually is screwed to the speaker grill with a nut. No hot glue for Panasonic, only the best. I was looking at this service sticker on the back and wondering what was repaired on the set and taking a closer look in here I noticed that in the vertical circuit it looks like two of the oil capacitors had been replaced with two orange drops right there. That right there, that gray, is one of the Japanese oil capacitors that like to short and leak and go out of tolerance. That's a paper right there. Electrolytic. There are some disc caps in this, but not nearly enough. The crappy oil cap. Anyway, the as I mentioned often the vertical circuit is very critical when it comes to capacitors 
So we're going to see as soon as it gets a little darker out here, we're going to fire it up and take a look. I'm sure it's going to have vertical issues at a minimum. Alright, so the sun is setting on this 3rd of July evening and getting ready to fire it up. I got the uh, VG91 there, pattern generator. And I was taking a look at the schematic and I was noticing these tubes have this uh, maybe European numbering PCF80, PCL82, PCL85. They all seem to have EF80. They all seem to have this European numbering system PCF80. Wonder what Japan was cloning when they built this. Anyway, I'm looking at the super complex vertical circuit here with the vertical blocking transformer. And we have a vertical height, vertical linearity, and vertical sublinearity. And that one's a little bit new to me. That might be something you see on a high end color set, but uh, not your typical black and white. So, I'm kind of anticipating problems in the vertical circuit just because it is so sensitive to uh, defective capacitors where a lot of these other circuits have a lot wider tolerance for bad caps than the vertical circuit. And seeing as there's already been some work done there in the past, just the complexity, look at this power supply. All right, let's give it a shot. Uh, Panasonic AN14. This is the Second Life Virgin run. I have no idea what's going to happen. Power is turned on. I am using an isolation transformer now. I learned my lesson when connecting to uh, pattern generators. So always use a always use a isolation transformer that way you don't cremate the pattern generator and it's not dark enough for the camera to sync to it so it's alright let's try this again it still seems a little bit bright out here power has been applied and the vacuum bulbs are heating I think yep Boy, that is one jacked up looking raster. Okay, let's turn on the VG91. It's bright though. Wow. I think the tuner is actually working. Holy crap! Wow, that's rock solid! Except the vibrating line at the top, but... Wow! So what is that? That is, um... Crosshatch. Boy, that's the most jacked up... <laughs> That's window circle. That is the most fucked up window circle I think I've ever seen on a TV. <laughs> That's uh It doesn't even look real. It's like dots. If you. 
<laughs> Look at that. I don't think I've ever seen a TV with a picture like this. But you know what? That's dots. You know what? The tuner's working, the audio's working, the IF is working, the horizontal's working. I don't know if I want to say the vertical's working, sort of. The video's working. The sync is locked. It's all there. And it is so jacked up that I think I should go grab the DTV converter box and we should see what actual picture looks like on this. I'll do that. So the bottom is actually rolled over. Look at the Channel 9 logos upside down. It's, it's actually stretched and then it's like rolled over and upside down on the, the bottom part here where it's doubled over. How is that even possible? It is bright. This is the reason why area of high pressure will continue to build tomorrow and uh, Thursday are going to be fine temperature wise. Really close to normal but as this area of high pressure builds in we are talking about heat 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 and boy is it going to be hot for at least the next few days. As this area of high pressure kind of builds we're looking at the clockwise flow around it and that could eventually kick up some monsoonal moisture for us as well and to add insult to injury when it's all said and done not only could we have the heat but by the time this thing kind of settles in we could also be feeling some humidity in some areas. So talking about the temperatures outside, we go to San Bernardino. We've got low 80s, 74 for the folks in Riverside, 72 in Corona, upper 60s for the folks in Ventura County. <laughs> so jacked up. Look at it's upside down. <laughs> We've got so many channels now on. Thousand dollars. Here we go. It's boy bands. Hit it. Here's the channel up here. 10 3 10 2 9 1. Lightly as we get into Sunday. So again, we'll be watching out for heat as we head toward the end of the week and for sure into the weekend. Guys, back to you. Yelp.com does not have to remove defamatory posts by its users. Now that ruling today from the California Supreme Court. The ruling is defamatory. For internet companies like Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, you might hear some fireworks in the background. So this this is great. I don't think I've ever seen a TV with the vertical so jacked up. I mean, that vertical is so jacked up. Some Samsung smartphones are sending pictures to users' contacts even if they don't actually press send. That glitch has caused major online complaints. One Reddit user says his Galaxy 9 sent his entire photo gallery to his girlfriend while he was sleeping. There have been many similar scenarios. Samsung is now investigating the problem and working on a fix. And hopefully all the Okay, let's try and adjust this vertical before the capacitors start to short. And again, this is supposed to be the circle in the middle of the screen. So let's see what we can do here. Man. 
Okay, this this right here, this is that sublinearity, and it doesn't seem to do anything. Ooh. This pot is dirty here. And but it's working. Another thing I got say about this set is that um, the uh, pots, most of the pot, all the pots are good. Really high quality TV. I mean, this thing, this thing really deserves a loving home uh, with somebody who's capable of restoring it and maintaining it. It needs like a Bob Anderson TV type restore like full-on polish and paint you know it, it, it to be all disassembled and scrubbed and have all every grain of dirt cleaned out of it and then and then uh, live on somebody's you know nightstand where they watch it occasionally and really appreciate it unfortunately I probably won't be able to find find that person and I think I would probably use a, a uh, request for an amount of money on it that would filter out most fish tankers you know that's how you that's this this is that sublinearity that's how you filter out the fish tankers you um, charge more than they're willing to pay so excellent contrast uh, excellent brightness jacked up vertical Go back to our converter box. Actually, let's look at the cross hatch. Yeah, you can see at the bottom it's it's flipped back over on top of itself. The um, tuner sensitivity is excellent, too. Tonight, detectives are on the hunt for suspects in a deadly shooting at a mid-city gas station. A clerk was gunned down at a shell station on Venice and Hauser Boulevards. Kick on Christy Fajardo with details on what exactly happened. Armed robbery is always a concern at gas stations. That's why this one here is equipped with cameras pointing in every direction. We don't know what's on the video, but what the clerk's boss tells us makes this all the more senseless. He says it appears the clerk did everything right, even did what the robbers told him. But they shot him anyway. Give me a high five. Oh, good boy. Human interest story. Okay. Clients, predominantly elderly people. They bring their pets here because they count on her compassionate prices. I don't want to let people down. I feel like if I don't get up from this... Compassionate prices. I've not heard that one before. Why don't you be compassionate with your prices? should do that the next time I go to buy gasoline, fill my car up. Why don't you be compassionate with your prices? Why do I have to pay four dollars a gallon? Anyway, beautiful, beautiful picture, horrible vertical, but experience with these situations and these old sets is that the vertical uh, circuit is very prone to bad capacitors. It's just the way it is. It's low frequency and it's dependent on, you know, 
those capacitors being accurate and not leaky and not lossy and not off value and um, but very impressive just all I've done so far is put a tube in it and I think uh, tomorrow be interesting to do a video like this on the 4th of July with all this background noise um, oh yeah there's a horizontal width adjustment let me play with that that's that thing that slides up and down that's this yeah that works of course in this day and age you want everything the width to be basically minimized because widescreen the widescreen format just completely cuts everything off so we'll drop the width come on so much sand in the damn core it won't move alright so they're after the fireworks so I pulled the top off and you can see here how it says oil on it so all of these over here are suspect and accessing them to service them is a big problem you really get gratification out of knowing that you got the story the stories we do are on day number two on the Panasonic one of a kind and 14 uh, we're going to go through and check a bunch of these capacitors in the vertical circuit and try and identify why the vertical deflection is so poor. I'm going to start off by playing with this thing. It's an old military bridge and what's interesting with this is it's it uses an oscillator. No wonder what the phones, I guess you can hook headphones up to it, but it uses the eye tube and um, the neat thing about this is you can test the capacitors in circuit because it's running um, it's got an oscillator in it so it's kinda like a, a modern ESR tester where you can test capacitors in socket in circuit so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and check a bunch of these capacitors in circuit now unfortunately this doesn't tell you the leakage but generally speaking if the capacitor is way off value it's done and needs to go anyway and like I talked about a hundred times before if these capacitors in the vertical circuit are out of whack off value leaky whatever uh, it's not going to work right so generally if they're off value they're going to be leaky and they need to be replaced so let's play with this so that there, that there is a point zero zero six eight orange drop. So point zero zero. I was playing with this, but yeah, point zero zero six eight. And you can see our eye is open there now if I shift it to 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 and see we get the eye peak there so that one is right on that one there is a 0 0.03 it's right on what I'm doing is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna mark the the ones that I verify good with a red dot so let's go after that one go after that one and that one those two are going to be very important and that one but these two especially all right believe it or not that one there 0 0.03 is is testing right on or close to it that's point that's point zero three point zero two zero three point zero four so right on okay, that one there seems really bad 0 0.03 and you can look at 
actually looks like it's gone up in value and I cannot get pretty much any kind of eye opening if I back off on the oscillator gain a little bit just to kind of so no defined peak it's kind of between 0 .003 and 0 .004 so I'm I'm looking at that one as being bad. Okay, uh, this is the grid coupling point one, this cracked wax thing, and it's measuring up closer to point two, and I'm not getting a. That's point one. That's point two, and I'm not really getting a defined eye opening there. So that one's probably leaky and gassy and. That little one there, which is actually across the, um, what do you call it, the horizontal sublinearity pot, measures about 0 0.03, 0 0.02, that's 0 0.03, so it's, it's, it's leaky, it's off, but I'm not going to worry about that right now because it's got a resistor bridged across it. It's interesting that turning the resistor has no effect on this thing's capacitor measurement. That's pretty cool. And that one right there measures good. So here's what we ended up with. This is test good, that test good, that electrolytic test good. It's a little high, a little high but good. That's one of the orange drops that's been replaced. That's the other orange drop. This one here is a little bit, little bit leaky. Maybe I should replace that because that's a 10%. This one here, 0 0.003, this is my main concern right here. Um, that's that small one. And the 0.1, of course. Anything in this network up here will cause havoc on the vertical circuit. I noticed someone has been in here before. Notice that big blob of solder right there. And this was not wrapped around. It was just soldered on the top. Once I cleaned the dust off, I could actually see it. So someone's been in here. And interesting, now that I got it out of circuit, it tests perfect. Which is uh, not what the booklet on this thing said. This thing said it was guaranteed to test capacitors in circuit but I don't know and I'm testing it on old trusty here and I have this will do leakage check no leakage and full eye opening so that caps good okay this paper one is showing mega leaky just full full on short at 50 volts so maybe that thing is throwing the tube bias off so this small one here too is a little leaky and off value. So being a 10%, we're going to change that. So are the oils in this thing uh, good? I recall the oils being the problematic ones, but the papers in here seem to, seem to be the crappy caps. All right, let's do a little science experiment here. This was a way leaky capacitor and that was a way leaky off value capacitor. Now leakage through this one really isn't going to be that great of an effect because you got two resistors bypassing it anyway. But we have 200 volts here. Comes around here. I guess that voltage is coming in from the 500 volt boost. 200 volts here. Here probably still 200 volts 200 volts is isolated off right here but it's shunted here and then this is supposed to be zero volts so I want to check with a meter and see how much leakage is actually getting through this capacitor so we'll check this point right here see what the leakage is all right, so power has been applied, and the boot. Oh, there we come. The here comes the boost voltage. Wow! No wonder why the vertical's so screwed up. Really? Oh. 
Really? 30 volts of leakage through that capacitor? Really? So there's only 61 volts on, on that side of it. Boy, that must be getting that tube hot. Yeah, it is getting it hot. So in turn, we're supposed to have 15 volts on the cathode of the tube. And I did test the tube for leakage and everything, and the tube is in great shape. And we have 32 volts. So yeah, the capacitor is leaking and the tube is biased on. No wonder why the vertical is so screwed up. So this capacitor right here is causing the problems with the vertical. All right, uh, I got the two capacitors replaced. Kind of difficult to get the solder to stick to these old crusty leads. Um, but I got it, and we have now on the cathode about zero volts. Let's check the, uh, no, I'm sorry, that's the grid. This is the cathode here. This one should be 15. And it's 15.4 instead of 30. So this is the one, the 15 volt goes through the resistor to ground and this is the leaky capacitor and this is where we had the high bias voltage from that leaky capacitor. So I think we're going to have a good picture now. So since this thing is basically an in-circuit tester it's looking around the resistance or leakage in the capacitors. So maybe this is not such a hot um, tester to use on these old sets where leakage is a major concern. I mean, it does test the value and if there's actual capacitance there. But, you know, leakage is a big factor when it comes to tube stuff. So maybe this is not the right tester. Uh, maybe the correct tester is one of those and to test this, the, the capacitors out of circuit. Even better is probably just to replace all the capacitors like the internet tells me to and not worry about diagnosing. Just to worry about which capacitors I got off by a factor of 10 because the thing doesn't work at all after I do a bulk recap on it. Here's the original owner's manual for the set. And this is actually pretty cool. It's shaped like a little TV in the front. Looks like the TV. And then the back is a picture of the uh, guts without 10 pounds of sand, of course. So. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over this one page at a time because this is like the ultimate 1960s, what do they call it, George Jetson, Amos and Andy, nuclear age, space age, whatever, this manual. I'd probably have some Esquivel rolling in the background if I didn't have to deal with... Uh, copyright so this just talks about a unique 110 degree picture tube uh, delivers the most realistic yeah sparkling details sure I guess in today's language this would be called a quick start guide the receiver specifications While picture may fill the screen during the day, slight picture shrinkage may occur at night due to sudden drop in voltage power. In power voltage, sorry. Voltage power. Yes, voltage power. This is kind of interesting. Specifications. 
uh, 115 to 125 volts, 160 watts. 160 watts for this thing. That that seems uh, excessive. I mean, I, I know that the Zeniths and stuff at the time were um, around 90 watts, and this thing does use a full 160 watts. So that's probably a picture of the assembly line. It's probably a picture of the factory. Thought this might make an interesting clip. There's 1962. There's 55 years later. 2018. That's this 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 is with 10 pounds of dirt. This is without. All right, well, as the 4th of July rolls out here, uh, I apologize for the war zone. Uh, let's see if we can get a decent circle on this thing. And square this up a little bit. All right. God, that's bright. All righty. Okay, what's wrong here? All right, let's try that again. What is that black bar there? Now the question is, can we get a decent window circle out of this thing? Now I have the vertical, I have the horizontal size squeezed down a little bit. And I do that because everything's in widescreen now, but look at that. Holy crap, look at that. kind of weird how the circles below the line the circles below the line down here at the bottom and it's below it here and it's below it here which are, it's like it's above it there and below it here that's the sublinearity You know what? All right, so the circle's a little stretched because the horizontal width is a little bit low. I'm gonna hook it to the converter box real quick. I can't. Oh, this is great. We got the fireworks in the neighborhood. 
as the background of the fireworks on the 1962 Panasonic black and white TV. Isn't that brilliant? Well, that's some... I got a bad connection here. Boy, that's some award-winning art right there. A lot of noise in the picture. You have to just admire the fact that this is the first time that this Japanese made one of the first Japanese imported black and white sets is playing on the 4th of July since probably the 70s and it's playing America Fest. America Fest on one of the first imported Japanese Panasonic sets into the United States on the 4th of July. So here's a look at the set reassembled after I cleaned it up really the best they could. Uh, I would almost rate this thing as superb quality and performance. I mean, I'm impressed. Uh, like I said in this video, early Japanese stuff was thought to be inferior. But this, I don't know. I've worked on old Japanese stuff, and yeah, it's not quite the same. It's not as simple as American made. But this thing, I mean, this would have been beautiful brand new out of the box powder coated, uh, tough, built tough, built good, good quality components. None of the pots are bad. Um, two bad capacitors and a bad tube. And here were the three offending parts. Not that it doesn't need a full recap, but I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to resurrect it. So we'll, I cleaned it all up. I took it all apart, the bottom all apart and cleaned it. So I'll, take it in the house and we'll take a look at MTV with it all back together. That's right, right down the block in an Escalade. Define Escalade. Here's the definition of Escalade. The scaling of fortified walls using ladders as a form of military attack. Define Escalade. Here's the definition of Escalade. The scaling of fortified walls using ladders Oh, come on, you're not that good, are you? Define Escalade. Here's the definition of Escalade. <sighs> the scaling of fortified walls using lad. Guess Miss Google's programmed for Ebonics. Mondays on MTV are a mother with the return of Team on Two. Don't focus on the gossip. Every rumor. You're salty. The hobby is moving on. So notice. No buzzing in the audio, it's clear. Oh, also occasionally I get somebody that harasses me and tells me I don't know how to fix TVs because there's this line up here. Well, this line is widescreen. 
16 by 9 widescreen, which is for the new TVs. See this line here? If I Let's see, how do I get it to show up? Signal's kind of weak. I don't have a correct coupler, but this line is because this is 16 by 9 for a new modern flat screen. The new the, the, the Missy video we were watching is 4 by 3 that's why it filled this well this could be 16 by 9 look at the clarity I mean for a black and white like the and yeah the weird shading and stuff is just frame rate I mean, you can almost read like the you can read like the small text on this. Yeah, like that. You can read that on this TV. The the IF stage is still caked with mud. I haven't cleaned it. The alignment's perfect. And I didn't even clean the tuner in this television. Right around town in an Escalade. Watching, more to come later, more to come soon, lots more to come.